Welcome to another episode of Eberhard Outdoors. This one's going to be extremely short. I shot a doe prior to or after estrus and I cut off her tarsals because they had a very unique odor to them and I used them as a scent drag and I've been doing that for years. I cut the tarsals off. Uh, this one was very ripe and this was a buck John shot last year. This one here is a from a buck I shot and it says ripe on it buck 2021 this one here is a excellent one it says EXC and this is off a of doe a lot of times when you shoot a doe they have almost zero odor whatsoever so uh, to a deer they still have odor but when you get a doe that has a really strong and they're a sweeter a sweeter smell than a buck a buck is rancid does have a sweeter odor to them but when they're strong I always cut them off and uh, I shrink wrap them and I date them and I put what it is and how good of a tarsal it was. In this video, I actually, on one, one hunt, only the evening hunt after I shot that doe in the morning, uh, I used her tarsals as a scent drag. And when I say tarsals, I just used one of them. I used it going to the tree and past the tree that I was hunting in. Uh, and then I also went up the hill into an open area, which this was in Kansas, and deer go through open areas. We had seen bucks going through that open area, so I went up to a fence, which was probably 40 or 50 yards, and I drug the tarsal from the fence back down, crossing the two or three runways in that open area into this creek bottom that was all dried up. And I had a five point cut the tarsal going through that opening and followed it right down to the tarsal and started licking it. After that, I did a rattle sequence. It was a transition from uh, a bedding area to another bedding area. Out there, you know, this is post, this is peak rut 
leading into post rut. Most of the does have been are get, having been bred. So now the mature bucks are actually having to get up off their butts and search for late estrus does because they've been pretty much doed up for the previous two and a half weeks. And out there, you don't have to do the quiet sequences as much. You can be more aggressive and do it for a longer period of time. I still have silent periods because that's when they're basically pushing and they're not mashing their antlers together, twisting their heads or just pushing. But much, much more aggressive than I do here. I mean, I grip my teeth when I do it out there to make as much noise as I possibly can. Because those deer, there's so many mature bucks out there, they're used to hearing that. I do a tarsal drag, uh, five point follows it to perfection. He's going through the transition zone, cuts that, turns around, sniffs the ground, follows it right down into the creek bed, right to the tarsal. Uh, and then I do a rattle sequence, I don't know, half hour later maybe, and this other busted up buck. He comes in from the other direction, from the, the side that I entered on, and I actually drug this tarsal right down my entry route right past my tree at probably four or five yards and then I kept going down to the dry creek bed and then after I did it from the fence down to the dry creek bed from the other direction I actually hung it on a little tiny sapling because both of these bucks end up actually sniffing the tarsal and they were at it for several seconds if not a minute. Tarsal drags work best when it's in some period revolving around the rut phase. So they work good in pre-rut, they work good in peak rut, and they work excellent in post-rut. 
Uh, Pre-rut and post-rut probably are the best because that's when the dominant bucks are not doed up for the most part and they're searching. So when they cut, cut the odor, um, tarsals will work. And I've also used buck tarsals. I use buck and doe both. But uh, this was post-rut. Most of the does have been bred. I think this tarsal was off a doe that was close one way or the other. Um, so that's why I used it during post-rut. I knew if a buck cut it, it was going to follow it. I have used doe tarsals during pre-rut that obviously were not, the tarsals were not in estrus. Uh, they were just tarsals that I cut off does that I'd shot. And I had bucks just walk right over them and not pay attention to them. So the time frame when you use them is definitely makes a difference in pre-rut because bucks are still vying for pecking order, I have found that uh, buck tarsals actually work the best. I've had bucks because they're, they're trying to do the pecking order, see which one is the dominant buck. So if they cut the, cut the odor of a buck that they're not familiar with, and it is also a dominant buck because it's a rancid tarsal, uh, they're much more apt to, to follow it. And I've killed two really good bucks. Uh, I, one was a 150-ish and one was a mid-130s uh, in Michigan. Well, I take that back. It was a 140, 140, 10 point. In Michigan, that uh, cut buck tarsal drags that I laid out and I shot them sniffing, actually with their noses, on the tarsals. And again, those were rancid buck tarsals that I shot the buck during the rut and cut them off. So... And real stuff always works better than commercial stuff. I don't have a lot of faith in it, in much of the commercial stuff you can buy in the store because most of that stuff is uh, canned and it's had oxygen in it for a long period of times and uh, it just has bacteria. And while it smells great to us, uh, I don't know, there's just so many people in where I hunt, here anyway in Michigan, that use uh, commercial scents that any anytime... The, the masses are using something, uh, that's something I want to shy away from. Um, I only want to use real stuff. Obviously, if it's real, it's not going to be bacteria laden and it's, it's going to smell like it's supposed to smell. It's not canned in June and sold in September and October and November, which a lot of urines are. In fact, most urines are. <laughs> so, so uh, when and how you use tarsal drags also makes a difference. If interested, the links to many of the podcasts I've been on or for information about my two-day whitetail workshops that take place in March and April, please visit my website at d-e-e-r-j-o-h-n.net. Thank you for watching another episode of Eberhard Outdoors and to receive notifications for future videos, please subscribe.